Supernova Style Science News with Jelly Seven Sage. I am so excited. From April 17th to April 23rd is the Cambridge Science Festival in the greater Boston area of Massachusetts. If you're in the area, you should check it out. I've gone to some of the events for the past two years, and I love it because I learned so much from this festival. And this year is the first year I'm going for the full week. On opening night this year is a symposium, or a talk, called Are We Alone? Exploring the Possibility of Other Intelligent Life in the Universe. The key speakers are Dmitry Sasolov. When I was 10, I took a course of his on edx.org about super earths and life. It was a really good course, and he is super smart. Also, Sarah Seeger, professor of planetary science and physics at MIT. Jack Sostak, a 2009 Nobel laureate. Lori Moreno, founder and executive director of the Camela Center for Animal Advocacy. Martine Rothblatt, CEO of United Therapeutics and Seth Shostak, senior astronomer for the SETI Institute. I've actually heard him talk before. He has a lot of interesting ideas and is definitely a fun speaker. The guest of honor is Frank Drake. He's the one who came up with the Drake Equation, which is a calculation that estimates how much intelligent life there may be that can communicate with us in the universe. And since 1961, when it was presented, there has been a few suggested revisions. I'm interested in what these scientists have to say about those revisions. After the talk is the Sidewalk Astronomy event at the plaza outside of the Harvard Science Center, where astronomy experts and people who love astronomy set up telescopes and other activities. There are a lot of other cool programs going on during the full week. One free program that's cool and very informational is the Meet a Scientist at the Harvard Museum of Natural History, starting at 10 o'clock and ending at 12 o'clock on April 19th. Another event that you should definitely check out is the Science Carnival and Robot Zoo at the Cambridge Ringe and Latin School Field House and Cambridge Public Library from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock on April 15th. Cambridge does this festival every year. Last year, I got to see the tokamak, the fusion reactor, before it was permanently shut down. I also got to see the microscope that could see an atom, and I got to see a functional flying car. I didn't see it fly, but I still got to see it. I learned a lot about geology and did some fun chemistry experiments too. I even got to go inside MIT's wind tunnel. It was so cool. This year, I'm signed up for the MIT X Make and the Girl Powered Smart Devices. If you want to do some of the events, you should go onto the website soon and sign up because the pre-registered events are filling up fast. But there's also a lot of events that are not pre-registered, like the one at the Harvard CFA on April 23rd from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It's one of my favorites because you could talk to astrophysicists that speci specialize in different things like black holes and pulsars, look through telescopes, see the great refractor, and more. On Earth Day, the Science Festival is going on at the same time of the March for Science. The March for Science is where people will march to promote science and the protection of the Earth. The festival is so amazing. I wish other cities would do this during their spring vacation to promote science and get kids interested in science. How great is it that the scientists, universities, and all the volunteers do this for the kids in their area? It's just amazing. I linked the website below so you guys could check out the Cambridge Science Festival. Share some science with your friends, follow us on Twitter at supernova underscore style, and show your supernova style.